All right, manifest destiny. Who knows what manifest destiny is? Who remembers what manifest destiny is? It has to do with religion, yes. Anything else? Does it have to do with anything else though? You say industrialization. Anybody want to else want to add into this conversation? People are trying to get rich. Yeah, that has something to do with some people trying to get rich. Yeah, always got to do with economics. Just know, in time you can always let's break it down though. Manifest, obviously or what? Easily seen. So that's the first thing. Manifest is just break down a root word. Obviously or easily seen, right? That's manifest. So what's gonna be the next word we're gonna look at? Destiny. And what is destiny? Events that what are going to happen no matter what. Is that right, clear there? So you have, oh yeah, by the way, this is an example when you come to tutoring and you have problems with your S with your writing, we're gonna write it on the board and get it fixed out. This took us about 30 minutes. But if you look at this, this is gonna get you points from me. So I left it there just for y'all to take an idea of what I'm looking for, all right? But that's what tutoring does for you. And that person saw, they're gonna see they they're gonna be over 100 percent once the great book back opens back up. There's like five of y'all got over 100 percent One of y'all got like 120. It's kind of bad if you got 30 then, right? Somebody got 120, you got 30. It was random. I was just looking at the board. Somebody came in to tutor yesterday and they had a problem with contextualization of thesis. So we knocked it out, drilled down on it. That's what that, I want y'all to see. That will give you the two points for me. So if you're not sure how to do it, that's what it should look like right there. And that's something that I didn't write it. I just kind of walked the student through the process. All right. So what's manifest again? Something that's obvious, or easy, easily seen, right? And then destiny is what? It's going to happen no matter what. So manifest destiny was going to happen regardless. We're not going to watch this video. But now here's the overall definition. Manifest destiny was the 19th century. 19th century is what years? 1800s, yes. During the 1800s, 1800 to 1899, okay? believe that the United States was destined, like it was going to happen for us to take over this whole continent. God gave us the right. Does everybody got me on that? This is the idea that God gave us the right to have this whole area. So we live in Georgia, right? Was Georgia one of the 13 colonies? Yes. I'm originally from California. Was that one of the 13 colonies? But if you think about the idea of manifest destiny, based on this definition, America was going to extend over into what now became California, no matter what happened, because they got here. Do I got me on that? Now, make sure you put this in your own words, but that's manifest destiny in a nutshell. We have to remember this because this has a big. So, the thing about you buy, you build a house, you got first, what's the first thing you got to do when you build a house? You got to have a foundation, right? This is the foundation of what we're going to talk about the Civil War. Do I got me on that? And in general, everything else too. Okay. Any questions on manifest destiny? Okay. So now here's a picture of the most famous picture you ever see in manifest destiny. Now y'all remember, I and then put this in your notes because I want y'all to fish this picture. What does the F stand for in fishing? Who remembers? Facts. Yes, there's a picture of it back there too. If you see it back there, it can help us out. So. First thing I want you to do is tell me what kind of facts you get from this picture. So in your notes, just put on there, manifest destiny, destiny picture, and we're going to fish it. What are some facts you got from this picture? What does the I stand for? Somebody, I've heard it over here, what? Inferences, yes. So you got facts and then you got inferences. All right. What's going to be the S then? Yes, it's gonna be support. So you got facts. Do you have inferences on those facts? And then how? What kind of? What can you get from the picture to support your inferences and facts? And then the H is gonna be help, but H more so is given a title. Is that right? Got me on that. H is gonna be given a title. So facts. What is the inf What do I mean by inference? What does that mean? What's going on? 
keep going. What what else? What else could inferences mean? Like I'm a prediction, educated guesses, hypothesis. These are all different things as far as inferences. All right, but it's personal why you see it though, right, y'all? Okay. And then support is just literally like, what kind of support do you got for those inferences and facts? All right. Who wants to give me their facts? Who wants to give me a fact? Go ahead. What's your fact? There's a railroad. There's a railroad. You know what? I always look at this picture and I always forget that train. <laughs> All right. There's a railroad. All right. Does everybody hear our facts that we got for a class right now? Everybody hear the facts? The railroad. Now, what kind of inferences can we make from the railroad? The railroad he's talking about is right here. And I'm going to say, if you look here, it's not a fully done railroad, is it? Okay. It's starting. Kind of give you an inference. <laughs> Go ahead. So this, you can say, is before the Industrial Revolution. You're right. Go ahead. To expand. And you, and you, if you look at this, to the the um, trains on the right, which would be the east. Is that right? Got me on that. That means it's moving west. Is that right? Clear there. Is that your really good one? And then we also talk about the support because we can talk about the train tracks not being fully done yet. You see some more trains over there. If you look back in the distance, there's another train. You actually see three trains. Is that right? Follow. Remember trains talk about civil wars. Is that right? Got me on that. Because I'm gonna tell you, whoever owns the trains, whoever uses the trains the most, is going to win the civil war. Is it right clear so far? Trying to give you some precursor. Now, my help will be, what was your help? What is your title? Manifest Destiny. That's fine, too. Now, notice going deep into this. You see the buffalo running away, right? Got to think about the Native Americans. Everybody got me on that? And, and y'all, we got to really focus on Native Americans. In the AP exam, they really are focusing on that. And even, like, say, if you take regular U.S. history, they focus on the EOC. But the Native Americans seen the buffalo as a religious animal. Is that right? Got me on that? First off, most Native Americans use every part of every animal. Is that right clear there? You take off the fur, what's the fur going to become? Coat. Has anyone ever ate buffalo meat? It's, it's literally looked like steak, but it's, it's more lean than chicken. Is that right? Got me on that? You cook it the same way steak, but just if you cook it, if you like well done steak, you can't make bison steak. It's bison, buffalo, same thing. It tastes disgusting. But it's a really good for you meat. Is that what I got me on that? Like if you lift weights, you and nutrition, bison or buffalo is really good. But it's also very expensive because as you can see here, they run away, right? We've killed most of the bison and buffalo. There's not a lot of them. That's why it's so expensive and probably why something I never heard of because you can't just go to the store and find it. Is that what I got me on that? And because bison and buffalo are so huge, we can't just make them. Did I follow me so far on that? But the bones would then be used for what? What do you think the Native Americans used the bones for? Tools or weapons, right? So everything came in. And I'm giving you a lot of precursors, so I hope y'all following me on this. But um, when the West, when the Europeans came in, they just killed the buffalo, and they just basically left a lot of different parts of it without being used. You got me on that? Would be disrespectful for Native Americans at this part of their religion. They would pray to them and things like that. So you know the whole idea? And I'm not asking, but some people pray before they eat food, right? That's, that goes deeper to like what's going on here with the Native Americans. Because you're giving homage and you're praying for that food to make sure it does well for you. Do you got me on that? All right. Um, you also see these men moving far west here. You can see here these are Native Americans running away, kind of going back to what I was saying with the buffalo. But look at the right here, dead in the middle. This wasn't done on accident. What's dead here in the middle of this picture? An angel. So that's saying not only manifest death was going to happen, God gave us the right to do it. Remember the three G's, right? It's coming back again, ain't it? God, gold, and what? Glory. So I'm telling y'all this. Never forget your three G's and no matter what you do. Even the um, SEQ we did yesterday with Nat Turner, you can still get throw in three G's in some way. Is there a got me on that? Is there a follow? That's always going to be an easy one to go to. All right. Are we good so far with this picture? All right. So let's go a little bit deeper. So. Thomas Jefferson had a dream that the United States would become an empire, empire of liberty. <sighs> Thomas Jefferson had a dream that the United States would become an empire of liberty. And who bought the Louisiana Purchase? Thomas. I know where you're going with that. <laughs> it came under Thomas Jefferson's presidency. But who actually bought it? 
Yeah, now you now you saying both gets me confused. I get those two. Either it was Monroe or Madison, but one of them James dudes. I want to say it was Monroe because Monroe Doctrine. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with y'all. If I'm wrong, it's y'all fault. Um, and I'm sorry, y'all. This is where me not being historian kind of hurts you, but I'm good with the legal stuff. All right. So he wanted the United States to become a what? Empire. Y'all know empire has a lot of different areas, right? There's an old saying, y'all should y'all know uh, Miss Lewis told you about this, but it was something called the British Empire. And the old saying is that the sun never sets on the what? British Empire. They had so much land, it was always sunny somewhere. Think about that. As big as this world is, that's a lot, ain't it? It's never dark on the on the British Empire. Now the United States is kind of there too, but not. Not like Britain. Is that right, follow? You know, we got we got uh Puerto Rico, we got all the Virgin Islands, uh, we got Guam over in the Pacific. Y'all follow what I'm saying with that? We're getting close to it. All right. So in eighteen forties, America began to be, um to believe that western westward and also southward. You want to get further south. Talk about Florida. And I'm setting up Mexico here. Y'all got me on this? It was our destiny to move. So if you're in our way, get out of our way by any means necessary. Because again, God told us we can do this. And you know, when you use religion, yeah. Yeah, you know how religion can be used. Are y'all good with me so far? Now, y'all want to hear some good news? I am recording this, so you'll be able to go back and look at it, okay? There, I got me on that. So I am recording this, and y'all, the same place I showed y'all where it's going to be at, and see, tell us this recording and be there. Y'all just keep your videos, your uh, fingers crossed that the audio actually works. All right. So the phrase, the, uh, phrase that was used is called manifest destiny. Is everybody clear on now the background? This is the whole, you know, contextualization of manifest destiny. Y'all see that? See how I did that contextualization? This is all the background for Manifest Destiny, okay? All right. Here is the United States map, right? Notice the land. 1783, we went up to the Mississippi River. Then we had the Louisiana Purchase. That's in 1803. Now, we're about to get to the uh, Mexican Secession and Texas Annexation, because that's going to be the whole Mexican-American War. And then we have the Oregon Territory in 1846. And we are now from sea to shining sea. sea. Did you got me on that? So the Mexican-American War, I'm saying, was a land grab. Did you got me on that? We found ways to justify it, and we stole land from these individuals. Did you follow? Here's the catch. Do you think just because the land changed ownership, people moved? No. And do you think Mexican, now America would be seen very highly fla flavored, I mean, uh, favored? You think they would seem very nice? No. They dealt with the same prejudice and stereotypes and racism that others did. All right. So, Louisiana Purchase, we already know this here, right? We know this. We know this about Louisiana Purchase. Shouldn't have to go back into it. We get been, we've been getting this thrown in our heads like since forever. Hmm? Nah, I mean, nah. This was a whole lot of money. Okay. This is new now. Texas annexation. All right. Texas annexation. Texas belonged to Spain, then it became Mexico, and then became an independent nation. Okay. So first, who owned Texas? Spain. Then who came who owned it? And then it became what? This is why if you go to school in Texas, the books are so different because there's a whole different background in Texas. Is it right clear there? Yeah. It's not like every other state because the, the way it became part of the United States is very different as well. All right. So Texas annotation goes into the idea that first is owned by Spain, then Mexico, and then it became independent. What does it mean when you say it became independent? It's its own country. Now, remember Manifest Destiny, right? How is the United States going to see this independence? It's a chance. We have a, we, now we have a foot in the door. We can change because you're right there next to us, right? 
Now, keep in mind, someone said it earlier. What? Why would we want to have more states in the South? Slavery, right? Slavery, but more important plantations, right? That's money. So even the northern states would still like to have more plantations because more plantations means more raw goods. More raw goods mean more manufacturing for me equals more money. Is that right with me so far? All right. You also got the organ, um, what? All right. Take this one to read this for us. So think about Great Britain. You know what? We already lost the United States, right? You know what? You could have had this. Like, we, we kind of want to be done with you. We go back to Canada. Is there a got me on that? British Canada. So basically, Britain kept everything above 49th parallel. We got everything south. So that whole border, the northern border around Washington, the state of Washington, is what we, what we got. That's Oregon. And you know Oregon's one of the states there. Is there a got me on that? Is that right with me? But again, we are now moving further what? West. We're now moving further west. So the Oregon country, we got we fall over with Great Britain. The uh we got the 49th parallel or the 49th longitude. We got everything below it. That's all you need to know. Just for so y'all know, this is a whole, this is like um a whole, this is 5.1. This is like 30 pages being condensed. Is it right clear there? And y'all know how the book is, right? Y'all had to write two paragraphs, read two paragraphs to get this one point. So this is me trying to condense it. All right, now, Mexican session. One during the Mexican-American War, California was now becoming an independent country as well. Mexican session. We won it during the Mexican-American War, which we're gonna dive deeper into. Is that right, got me on that? But I'm trying to give you introduction to it. But no, after the Mexican-American War came the Mexican what? What came after the Mexican-American War, y'all? The Mexican what? Secession. Secession. So then this is where California becomes an independent country. Now, we all know. Did y'all know this? Based on economic numbers that came out yesterday, and I'm looking at this because I'm setting y'all up for something we're going to be doing tomorrow, too. California, if it was to become independent and break off from the United States, it would be the fourth largest economy in the world. California. As, as of November 1st, 2022, if California was to break off, it would be the fourth largest um strongest economy in the whole world so as bad as the united states talk about california they need california is there a got me on that is there a follow me because yeah. is, is the overall economy of the world doing very well no but cali's kind of california is consistently giving out checks my parents are constantly getting checks because they're constantly giving rebates or stimulus because they have money to give we don't have that everywhere else do we do we? No. They do pay a lot in taxes, though. Like, a lot. A whole lot. All right, the gas and purchase. Uh, we bought this from Mexico. So let, let, listen to this. We got all the western states after the Mexican-American War. Do I got me on that? Except this little piece of land. Y'all see that little piece of land right here on the map in green? We got all of it except this one piece. I don't understand it. We got this one piece. But understand topography. Topography is mountain ranges. What makes the West so difficult is there's a whole bunch of mountains and hills. Everybody got me on that? And we already talked about how important the railroad was, right? Well, it's kind of hard to get um, railroad through mountains. Are we with me so far? The gas in person, this is the one piece of land. This is right around Tucson, Arizona. Has anyone ever looked into University of Arizona for school? It's actually a really good school, all right? It's right in, it's, it's right here in the middle of, now, huh? It's, Tucson is actually, it's not really in the middle of nowhere no more. Like, when I was going to go there in 2000, middle of nowhere. Now, it's a lot more developed. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not as bad. As, from, from a kid from L.A., it was like, hey, it's cool. But the cost of living is great. And I like that. I like that cost of living. But anyway, let me go back to this. 
Um, you know from the idea of living there that this is one area that's flat and it's hills and mountains right above there, right? So we bought this again from Mexico, so we didn't take it this time. We bought it, that way we can connect the railroad from the south going into California. Do I got me on that? Has anyone ever heard of I-10? I-10, like, yeah, it goes from the east coast to the west coast, like literally speaking. All right, well, um, okay, this is why we got to teach geography in school. But the I-10 is going to go around that same area. It's just flat land. Do I follow me on that? So we bought this from who, y'all? Bought it from Mexico. All right. Saga Jawea. Y'all remember her? This is a student picture. So this is why I like when y'all do work. Cause see, look, don't that look cool? This was a seventh grader. This was seventh grader, yeah. He did pretty good. All right. Huh? It's pretty good. All right. What does Saga Jawea do? Yes. She helps. Uh, Lewis and Clark navigate the West. We should know this, right? Okay. Then we also had. All right, so let's listen to this video real quick. Just listen and watch. What is this map showing y'all? These are all different Native American tribes. Because as we move west, we had to take land from somebody, right? Here's a little story I'd like to tell about the land that we love and know so well. It started small, not much to boast. Just 13 colonies on the east coast. As time went by, Europeans moved west and took Native land, calling it conquest. What they do with it's easy to see an idea called Manifest Destiny. Georgia, 1828, the Cherokee Nation was the center of the bay. They did their best to assimilate, but their land was some prime time real estate. So Andrew Jackson laid the few to rest and forced them to leave in the name of progress. Over 15,000 faced their fears and what later became known as the Trail of Tears, Alabama. No, we don't Mississippi. No, we don't. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Y'all catch that one talk about Iraq? Because you do know we base her in Iraq now, right? All right, so that's all examples of American imperialism, all right? Hey, almost done now. No short essay. Congratulations. Yay, because y'all are here. No short essay. Give yourself a round of applause. Okay? But I want you to think about this. How did American pursuit of manifest destiny lead to conflict with other peoples and nations? Think about everything we talked about. We took a, we're in a lot of different areas, right? Is everybody got me on that? 
So the last video where we show where we are now. We have a lot of we don't have what Britain had, but we're pretty darn close to saying the United States never has the sunset on it. You got me on that? But think about it, you don't have to write on it. Unless I tell you to, and I told them you guys in class right now, you don't have to. So congratulations. That is manifest destiny. Is there any questions on manifest destiny? No questions? All right, go ahead and rotate, people. You can go wherever you wherever you and your group wants to go.